Bonjour les jardiniers euh, américains. Euh, voilà, moi je suis Thierry et Sandrine moi, de la Broie. Nous sommes euh, horticulteurs dans le nord de la France et nous produisons plein de plantes vivaces. Et nous aimons par moments aussi euh, sélectionner des très belles choses nouvelles. Et pour l'occasion, on voulait vous présenter le Schichacrium euh, caméléon. Pour en ce moment, et certains, on est au mois de décembre. Euh, il n'a pas sa belle allure comme il devrait être. Euh, mais sachez que c'est un Schichacrium qui est avec un feuillage panaché, c'est-à-dire qu'il est avec un feuillage vert bordé de blanc. Alors, ce n'est pas un Schichacrium qui va venir à 1 mètre de hauteur. Il ne deviendra pas plus haut que quasiment 50, 60 cm de hauteur. Euh, il est très beau parce que quand il sort au printemps, donc il est vert bordé de crème. Et... Au mois de juillet, comme il le fait ici, eh bien le, le crème, la couleur crème va devenir rose et ça va devenir même de plus en plus foncé en étant même carrément burgundy. Euh, et arrivé en hiver, là j'ai pris une petite plante pour vous montrer, mais vous voyez, on est mi-décembre et en hiver, comme beaucoup de graminées, le schichacirium reste bien droit. Il faut vraiment des chutes de neige pour vraiment que la plante tombe. Mais autrement, voilà, c'est une plante qui reste décorative tout l'hiver, comme la plupart des graminées. Euh, vous voyez, je voulais vous montrer une petite chose. Euh, J'ai vraiment un petit pied. Mais euh, on dit toujours en France que les, les garçons naissent dans les choux et les filles dans les roses. Et ben, nous, ici, les plantes, quand elles naissent, vous voyez, elles naissent dans des petits pots, souvent comme ça, où on fait nos semis. Parce que ce schichacrium là a été obtenu dans un semi le Schichacrium The Blues, et on a, eu, on a observé dans le semi un petit pied qui était déjà panaché. Là, il a vraiment démarré tout petit. Donc au jardin, c'est une plante qui adore être mise en plein soleil, même dans des sols secs, drainants. Donc chez vous, aux états unis ce ne sera pas difficile à trouver un tel endroit. Moi, dans le nord de la France, c'est un peu plus compliqué parce que nous avons des sols plus lourds et argileux. Donc c'est toujours mieux d'améliorer le sol. Et Sandrine va finir en vous disant euh, comment l'utiliser. Oui, donc il faut plutôt le planter sur l'avant de votre jardin avec d'autres plantes, mais il ne faut pas la planter tout seul, il faut mettre quand même en masse. Parce voilà. que si vous en plantez qu'une seule, c'est quand même assez long. Donc ça sera plus joli en faisant plusieurs plantes pareilles. Voilà, en mettre plusieurs au mètre carré, ça va vraiment faire un effet de masse. Parce que c'est vrai que tout seul, ben, ça ne ressemble à rien. Voilà, et ben, écoutez, euh, chers jardiniers américains, à très bientôt pour de nouvelles aventures. Au revoir. Au revoir. Hey, everybody. So, so glad you could join us today. Uh, yes, that was all in French. Uh, Terry doesn't know very much English, so that could have been uh, quite interesting. Uh, and I don't know any French except for maybe two words. I think wee oui, wee oui, and champagne, and that's about it. So that wasn't going to go far. But uh, anyway, we're so glad you could join us. And uh, again, we're excited to have Peter here. Uh, he represents the plants in Europe and the United States. So um, we're glad he's here and he can uh, give us some, uh, uh, again, some, some advice on this. Anyway, uh, Peter, if you could, you may want to Uh, start off by giving us uh, a, a, another description. Uh, uh, Terry did give us, uh, of course, described it for us, but um, maybe you could fill it in and, you know, just back, and back it up. Yes. Well, hello, uh, growers, plant lovers, uh, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Peter and um, I represent uh, breeders from all over the world, and I always try to uh, find the right varieties for the right markets. So when I was traveling in France, I uh, visited Cherry de la Brouille, and uh, Cherry is the world famous breeder of uh, Eucara Caramel. That was his uh, first introduction. And uh, when I visited him, I saw from a very, very far distance, I saw a grass with variegated looks. And of course, I have, uh, I have a wish list of uh, plants that I like to, to, to have in my portfolio, which are uh, yeah, not yet on the market. 
So uh, since it is a native plant, the little blue stem, uh, the first thing I thought is, well, who do I think about to bring this plant in North America? And that's of course Hofmann Nurseries. <laughs> so first I knew when I saw this uh, chameleon is that it's gonna be a real game changer. And for me, little blue stem, we call it Cisagirium in uh, Europe. When I uh, did more research about uh, the plant, uh, you, you find about it, uh, you see how good you can use it in the landscape. It falls under xeriscaping, which is very, very important for climate proof plants. And if I look to the, the, the mother plant, which is uh, uh, little blue stem, the blues, which is the yeah, biggest well-known Cisagirium in the market. When I see that in springtime, I think, hmm, the color, the flush, it, of course it has a blue uh, foliage, but it doesn't pop. And that was the reason why I saw the new chameleon from a far distance in springtime already, where it already was popping. So you have color into a seriescaping grass, which is yeah, very unique. And that's why it's, it's a game changer. So in springtime, it flushes with bright white variegated foliage. And that's already also the starting season for selling your plants. Mm -hmm. And when you have that grass in your, um, your garden center or in your garden, uh, it brings a lot of color and it has a very easy, uh, easy to maintain, almost carefree. I have it now three years in my clay garden. I, I, I must say I'm a lazy gardener. Uh, so uh, a lot of plants, they don't survive my garden, but this uh, chameleon is still alive. And every year in springtime, it flushes with the white variegated shoots. Now, then a lot of people are asking, ah, and I, that was also one of the first questions from John. Yeah, but variegated plants, come on, it uh, must be burning in full sun. How is it doing in my climate? I said, well, trust me, this is going to be doing very well in your climate. Plant it in the full sun, no burning at all, and it will shine in, in your nursery. Uh, so that is then also the summertime where at Hofmann Nurseries, it can be very, very humid, uh, which is, uh, yeah, difficult to grow a certain type of plants. And then as a big bonus in uh, autumn time, fall time, the color changes to pink. Well, how many plants, which are zone three hardy, are having that characteristics? Well, chameleon, of course, but why else? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah right well yes yes well and it, and it does look wonderful here in north carolina um it's 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 the colors have been phenomenal they come out in the spring as you say we've got the cream colored with the with the green uh and we will even see pink the pinks actually start to come on uh, i think early to mid-summer now it doesn't you don't see much of it but it starts to you start you start to get the idea of what this is about to do as we get into the fall it gets even darker with burgundies and so on so it really is a, quite a stunning plant We're very I, I, to have it. yeah and because of your uh, big humidity i didn't expect that i knew it would be pretty but mm -hmm. yeah it was a very nice uh nice to see the pictures from all your trials where you yeah pass the trials to see the color changes in the uh, yeah in the nursery so the picture on the left is in springtime when it flushes yeah and then on the right you see the the summer fall color yeah, and that's just uh yeah very popping so yes. yep. also for yeah for growers it's easy to grow grass uh, it has a very long sale season and for consumers, you have a long, long time to enjoy. And it's super easy. So what else do you look in? And it's a water saving plant because it, it fits under the seriescaping uh, group. So yes. what else are you looking for in a plant? 
That's all you need, this one. <laughs> That's all what you need. <laughs> Well, it, it does. Again, we do enjoy the colors. They do perform well. And even the stems are, are, are up. They're, they're uh, red or, or, or pinky. So uh, it is quite a stunning plant in the landscape. So. And uh, because mm -hmm. this has variegation, it's more dwarf, which uh, still stands up and doesn't flop. So right. that's also another bonus. Yes, that's true. No so would you guys recommend this plant more for a container or more for the different like mass plantings or landscapes what what were you thinking for this plant well i, I always look uh, about how you can use a plant so uh, there are multiple options what you can do with this plant and um, because it's a uh, uh, a colorful grass, you can already put it in mixed containers, mm -hmm. combine it with other uh, plants. And even when you go up more north to colder zones, it will survive in your mixed containers. And of course, most important, uh, yeah, the cityscaping, uh, carefree maintenance or low maintenance, where uh, landscapers, contractors has not a lot of maintenance for these, uh, for this variety. And yeah, if, if you like uh, if you like color, uh, which uh, most people also uh, likes, then it's also good for uh, yeah mass plantings, mm -hmm. and that's also because of the yeah the the xeriscaping, the water saving attribute, mm -hmm. and I think that's yeah I see that more and more uh, becoming popular, and for the uh, homeowners. Uh, I don't know if that's also a trend in uh, in the US, but also here in Europe is that how can we engage young people into gardening? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking all the time about it, and I'm also checking that with my uh, with my friends what they do, and they don't have experience with gardening. So when they buy a plant which needs a lot of water. They always get disappointed because it dries out in the hot summer or they forget to water and then the plant is dead. So with this chameleon, it's the solution to engage new people, young people to get engaged with gardening because when they buy the chameleon, they will have success. And once they have success, they will be very enthusiastic about buying another plant <laughs> and then they will be more... How, how older they get, the more they get uh, to, to know gardening and how to do, to do it and how to use it. So also for the homeowners, for container gardening, patio gardening, uh, and of course in, in the garden itself, yeah, they, they, they always have success. Mm -hmm. How is uh, chameleon selling in, uh, in Europe? That, that's also uh, doing very well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, very good. That's good to hear. And I and expect also, it to do the same here after some time, once we get production up and going seriously and get some good numbers uh, on board, then uh, I think it'll be, I think it'll be a big hit here. It's a, it's a very easy sell it's and it's native. So it's a colorful right. uh, native grass. Yes. Yep. That's exactly right. Um, I have a question from the audience. Um, the variegation is stunning. Is it stable or do we see any reversions from that? Now, this is a very cool question because Cherry de la Bruya, a lot of variegated plants are mutations, but Cherry de la Bruya, he, uh, he took a lot of seedlings, sowed them, and chameleon is a seedling. So it's not a mutation, it's a seedling. That means it's just 100% true to type, stable uh, variety. Yeah, thanks. Um, I've got another question. Do you get any any of the more typical schizocarium fall colors with this variegated foliage, like the deepening purples, oranges, and blues? Peter, what do you say over there? If we get um, what type of colors? If you if you get uh, any of the more typical schizocarium fall colors with this uh, variegated foliage, like the deepening purples, oranges, and blues. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's 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 more, but it's uh, starting to in the late summer. It's starting to to march to pink purple, 
and then uh, later into fall it's really burgundy mm -hmm. so you can also see that on the, the picture on the right uh, that that is really showing the purple color so what do you uh, think uh, john well i haven't seen uh, we've, we've watched it of course in the in the fall of the year here we i haven't seen i don't remember seen any oranges no uh any i don't remember seeing any really deep purples um i, I think it's what you see on the right is is what you can expect uh, a chameleon to do in the fall of the year it just really tends to to burgundy up if you will and uh and, and that's those are the colors you're dealing with i guess if you get down in the middle of it a bit more you might see uh, maybe some some purples but it just it seems to for us it was maintaining this uh the, the burgundies uh in the in the fall in the late fall of the year or so yeah i would say too that i think that this the the photos don't really do this plant justice i mean that it is really quite amazing to see in person those deep colors that uh that that, that are here Mm -hmm. um, my expectation is the colder you go the more intense the color will be yes so yeah. and since it's a zone three hardy uh grass yeah mm -hmm. it can be uh, going to pretty cold uh, areas yes i think and i think that's very true i think the if the farther north we go i think the the more intense the fall colors will be so yeah oh wait another question just came in Thank you, anonymous attendee. Um, are the <laughs> disease and pest pressures comparable to those of other schizocarium? I think they could be. We had, uh, in 2020, it was the third wettest year uh, we have seen on record. So we were probably almost two feet over normal here at the nursery. So it ceased. there were certainly issues here and there. Um, and then and we, we noticed of this in the landscape, of course, uh, that was and, and the trial gardens that we have. So is that with uh, chameleon or is that in general with uh, little blue stem grasses? I think it, it's certainly in general. The native uh, plants can have if it's too wet, you're going to you can tell it in the landscape. So we like to have a, a normal uh, year and in, in rainfall that that helps us out so much more. So we're well, obviously we're taking care of the plants in the in the cold frames in the greenhouses to make sure the customer gets a, a disease free uh, plants. But um, you have a, a season as we did. Uh, we you can have there there will be issues in the landscape. So, but as far as pests go, there's not really anything. Pesticide? No, I don't think there's a, there was anything out there that really bothered the plant. So. Mm -hmm. So I think growers should have uh, an easy uh, task in growing these things out and, uh, of course, getting them out the door. Okay. I would like to say thank you to everyone for joining us. Uh, we are very excited about Chameleon. Again, Peter, thank you for joining us. It's, it's, it's quite a thrill to have you here. Um, yeah, exciting. Good idea. <laughs> very nice. And thank you very much, everyone. So uh, we'll see you in the, in, hopefully actually see you in the very, uh, in sometime in, uh, in 2021. So I hope again. Yeah, thanks yes. again, Peter. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.